It was a great night for England and hopefully two more great nights to come as they hopefully go to Wembley to win Euro 2022. Let's get some reaction now from former England defender Jamie Carragher. Jamie, good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. We are going to be talking transfers later on, but we need to start with this top story, and that's that England are through to the last four of the Euros. How are you feeling after that result this morning? Yeah, it was brilliant. It was a, a real feel-good factor, a certain result. It didn't look too promising at certain stages through the game, but I think that's what makes it so special, you know, when the final whistle goes. After the extra time, basically what England had been through and the character that he'd shown, I think it was obvious that at certain times through the game, Spain were better technically on the ball in terms of possession, but there's different ways to win a football game and England showed that. England breezed through the group stages. They scored 14, they conceded none, and it was a, a rather different test for them last night. But does that test show them the fact that they can overcome anything now Then maybe they could go on to win the tournament? Well, well I think going into the game, England would have been well aware that Spain, possession-wise, is as good as anything in this tournament. England have done very well with the ball, but Spain were a, you know, a level above. But I think sometimes... we. We obsess not too much because, you know, possession is a big part of the game, certainly in international tournaments. But there are different ways to win a game. And I think the big thing of obviously being at home, I think you could see the effect of that once the equalising goal went in. The momentum completely changed. And, and England have got to use that emotion from the side of the pitch, uh, you know, from the crowd. And they got really behind it. And it always only felt like there was only going to be one winner. One thing and got the late equaliser really, and they've just got to use that to their advantage because you think now in a, in a semi final and hopefully a final they're going to need that, uh, and they're going to have you know times throughout the game where they're going to be under pressure, and they're going to need help, and we certainly got that last night. When it wasn't going well for England, presumably they would have wanted to turn around to the dugout and get some inspiration. How much did it help that their manager Serena Wiegmann was actually in the dugout last night? Yeah, listen, that was that was huge news before the game. Obviously, that she did, you know, come through the you know the COVID test, and I think gave everybody a lift before the before the game. And you can see the impact from the coach on the side of the pitch, and and you know what the England players did on the pitch last night was absolutely fantastic. But I thought what happened off the pitch in terms of the crowd, but in terms of the changes from the, you know the bench. Uh, from Serena, I think made a huge difference within the game and turned the game. Really, and that's the power of the coach. When you have a top coach, it can make a difference. And the fact that uh, you know Serena could make it onto the bench before the game, I think would have given you know the players and staff and everybody involved a huge lift. I know you can you know, make them changes there, being right into sort of the the heart of it with the coaches discussing tactical you know change. It wasn't just the changes; it was moving to a back three at a certain stage as well. So there was a lot of input uh, off the pitch as well as on the pitch last night. Let's move on to some transfer talk now. We've got to start with the breaking news. Brighton have rejected a £30 million bid for Mark Kukurea from Manchester City. The bid falls short of what they value the player at, £50 million. Is he worth that? And should Manchester City be pursuing this deal? Well, I think Man City have always, really since Pep's been there, lacked a real outstanding left-back. It was always a position where they've had sort of different players at different times, you're never quite sure who played there every week where, you know, it was, you know, Kyle Walker played right back and Sello's gone in there and been as good as anyone, really. Uh, but I'm sure Pep would like a left footer there. Zinchenko's move on to Arsenal. So when you say is he worth it, listen, Man City normally spend £40, £50 million pound on full backs. They've done that notoriously since Pep came. And like any transfer, what you pay for them, if they play well, you think he's worth it. And, you know, he looks a classy operator. Uh, when you see him in the Brighton Shea, plays a similar type of football to Manchester City in possession. So I'm sure he'll be, a, you know, a good sign and something that Man City possibly need now with, as I said, Zinchenko moving on and having a bit more competition there for Cancelo and he can then provide competition on the other side of Kyle Walker. Yeah, you're right to mention Zinchenko there because it's... Presumably, if he does go to Manchester City, that's who Kukurea would be replacing. He's on his way to Arsenal. If you think about that, Zinchenko to Arsenal, Gabriel Jesus to Arsenal, right? Raheem Sterling has gone to Chelsea as well. What do you make of Manchester City's transfer business? They always spend big, but I think this would actually put them in the black in terms of net spend. Yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not something you associate with Manchester City, but, you know, I think Pep is uh, quite vocal on the fact that at times when he has players who have maybe 
not being regulars in the side for a couple of years or maybe not 100% happy with their role within the squad. And maybe that's the case with, with those players that we've mentioned. They're not players who you think are nailed on starters week in, week out. And you know, it looks like that's somewhere where Pep's thought, well, OK, those players, whether they maybe causing a problem behind the scenes or maybe not training right, maybe he just thinks it just needs rejuvenating the, the dynamic within the squad and bringing players who are maybe a little bit more hungry now to try and push those uh, you know, certain starters we associate with Manchester City week in, week out. And maybe that's the thought process. But they're losing some great players, but they're bringing some great players in. And it's just whether they can gel. And I think we will see a different Man City this season, just for the fact that they've obviously brought Haaland in, who's a different type of profile of, of striker than what they've had in the last couple of years. Now let's talk about the red half of Manchester. Manchester United looking much improved in pre-season. Are you nervous at all looking at just how Eric Ten Hag may be getting them back on track, especially if they bring in Frankie de Jong? I, w I wouldn't say nervous. Uh, I think there's a long road for United that they're on at the moment in terms of challenging for the title. I think their first thing, and you know, Eric Ten Hag and the players they're bringing in will be we need to get this club back in the Champions League where it belongs and that's where Manchester United should be. One of the biggest clubs in, in the world, never mind this country. So to not be in the Champions League just doesn't feel right when United are in the Europa League. So I think that's the first thing. And I think once United do that, I think then it'll be looking at the title in the next couple of years. But it won't be easy to get back in the top four this season. And not just for United, for, for any team who are normally in the top four, you'd expect City and Liverpool to do it because... They're always going for the title, but you know, you look how strong Chelsea would be, the signings they're bringing in, Tottenham's work as well, Arsenal also. So I think competitively now, in terms of getting in the top four, it's, it's, it's really tough and, and it's proven that for a lot of Manchester United managers who've got great CVs in the past, and there's no doubt this manager has a, a really good CV, but they made a really good start in pre season. Uh, it'd be interesting if they can get De Jong, because I do think he's a top class player, and I think he'll make a huge difference for them.